What happened? 1957, Sputnik was launched. Caught the United States with his pants down. President Eisenhower said, that'll never happen again. It was a disgrace to us in terms of scientific achievement. So he formed the Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA, a Department of Defense Agency, as a response to fund scientific endeavors in a significant way with heavy funding, long-range funding, innovative funding to keep us, to give us back the, the leadership and maintain it. So the early role of ARPA is very important in this history of the internet. It was in 1962 that this fella, Licklider, J.C.R. Licklider, joined ARPA and created the computer part of the research effort, the Information Process Techniques Office. And he basically articulated some ideas he had for a galactic network. His concept was you put humans and computers together and you get this, what he called the man-computer symbiosis. Good things will happen in terms of the interface and the interaction, man to computer. Two years later, Ivan Sutherland of MIT was a classmate of mine. He took over from Licklider. He came to UCLA and he tried to create a three node network to connect together three almost identical IBM mainframes on our campus. Technology was there, we could easily have done it, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen because of jealous administrative reasons. The administrative domains wouldn't agree that anyone else could use their computer. They were using 100% of the machine, they couldn't share it with anyone else. Never happened, could have, didn't. But the idea of a network was now in the air. In 1965, Larry Roberts, another classmate of mine at MIT, he basically got a contract from ARPA to try to send data between two computers across the country. It was extremely difficult, clumsy, onerous. They used up a dial-up connection. He and Tom Merrill basically made it happen. But it proved that there was a better technology needed. It turns out there already was a technology in place that could be implemented, but ARPA began to see there was a need to do so. So ARPA, the early role, Robert Taylor, this fella, he recognized the need for a network. He recognized that everyone that he hired to do research was asking not only for a computer, but for all the resources all the other researchers had. For example, at the University of Utah, we had excellent computer graphics. This is before the network. UCLA, simulation. Illinois, high performance computing. Stanford Research Institute, database technology. And every time a new researcher came by, they said, not only buy me a computer, but give me all that capability, all of the graphics, the simulation, the high performance, et cetera. And basically, ARPA said, no, we can't afford to do that, but let's put you in a network. So they brought Roberts to ARPA, Information Processing Office, to implement, I'm sorry this is in the way here, um, to basically to implement this network. We're gonna return to the ARPA story shortly. Meanwhile, there was a theoretical chain. That's the ARPA story. Basically, they had a vision, they started supporting computer research, they thought about networks, they recognized the need for a network, and they were poised to make it happen. In parallel and earlier, there was some work on the technology underlying it. So this is the ARPA timeline. The research community was busy generating the technology which would create the internet. Uh, there were three groups. One of them was at MIT, and that was myself. I basically produced a paper in April 62, which laid out some of these ideas that um, you heard about earlier. The RAND thread, Paul Barron, you, his name was mentioned, he produced his paper in September 62, and Donald Davis, who coined the word packet, did his work basically in 1965. This was the research group that was developing the underlying ideas of packet switching. So let's go through that. In 59, I started work with someone named Claude Shannon. I hope you all know who Claude Shannon was. Who here has, knows the name Claude Shannon? 11 people. Shame on you all, okay? That's him, giant in his field, produced the kind of technology. His was a very important contribution to communication theory, which eventually led to aspects of the, of the internet. In 61, um, I introduced a PhD proposal to model and analyze data networks working with Shannon and some others. And in that proposal, I talked about what you might expect. The nodes will receive, sort, store, and transmit messages that enter and leave via the links. Introduce the concept of queuing networks that you heard about. 
In April 62, I produced a paper, which basically was the first to talk about fixed length blocks. We now call them packets and analyzed how they behave. In December 62, I finished my dissertation, became the book that you, you heard about, talked about all the aspects of analyzing and designing networks, uh, but it's all theoretical and simulation. It, it became a book that was mentioned, uh, that's my dissertation, published three different times. Dover published it, it went out of print. McGraw published it, went out of print. Dover published it again, it's in print. You can find it on the net. Anyway, that's what it looked like then, that's what it looked like now, that's what happens to you. Okay. <laughs> So Licklider and I were both at MIT at this period. Neither one of us knew about, I didn't know about his vision, he didn't know about my technology. Together, it, it formed the elements you needed for the internet, but eventually we got together and began to think about it. Um, in my dissertation, I, I it did all the usual stuff. I did the analysis of design, um, introduced some adaptive routing control, distributed control, wanted to build large networks, so you had to leave it distributed. Worked, about, worked in uh, producing packets. Meanwhile, at RAND, Paul Bowne was working on military communications. He was interested in redundancy. In 62, he also started to talk about message blocks, also coming out as, as packets. In 64, he published some important reports. The word was getting out in a variety of ways now. That's what it looked like then. That's what it looks like now. That's life. <laughs> Meanwhile, in National Physical Laboratory in the UK, Donald Davies, was working on, he was thinking about packet networks. He coined the word packet. In June, there was a private uh, paper circulated in which he talked about a design for a data network. He used some of my earlier theory. In October, another paper for the design. 69, another paper for design. In 1970, the National Physical Laboratory decided to fund this thing, and they created a one-node network. A one-node network does not make a network. Had the UK government the vision and the, uh, the desire to continue funding this effort, whoever was talking to you tonight would have been speaking with a British accent. Okay? They missed the opportunity to capture the internet development. They just lost it. And it, 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 it certainly embittered Donald Davies at that point. That's what it looked like then. That's what it looked like before he passed away. So we had all this threads of inquiry coming together. These three researchers put together technology it was basically independent, almost un unaware of each other's work. In the 60s, we said, here's a technology. We go to at and say, look, this is the wave of the future, data communications. Nobody cared, especially not at and They said it wouldn't work. And they said, even if it does work, we want no part of it. And that's exactly what happened. It did work, and they had no part of it. Um, ARPA was now poised to catalyze, okay, this work into the network they were imagining. So, let's look at it. Licklider had described the vision that was being talked about, okay. The theory had been developed. Sutherland had talked about networking in the first place. Taylor recognized the need for a network for ARPA. Roberts was there to build a network. In fact, he was aware of my research and he said, I won't spend millions of dollars unless you can prove it'll be okay and I, I, we, we proved it. So, beginning. 1967. The researchers were being supported by ARP and the story I told you before, you want me to do research, buy me a computer, give me all the power everybody else has. ARP said, no, we can't afford that, but here's an opportunity you can't refuse, namely, join a network. You want to do graphics? Log on to the machine at University of Utah. You want to do simulation? Log on to the machine at UCLA. So these researchers reluctantly were forced to participate in a network. And they didn't want to, by the way. All the great researchers of those period said they had their machines, they wouldn't share them in a network for the same reason that uh, the people at, at UCLA didn't want to. I'm using 100% of my cycles. How can I put on a network to let other people use it? They forgot the fact they could use other people's machines. So they participated and everybody began to love it very soon. So, 67, the idea was in the air, ready to go. ARPA brought together a bunch of people to start the design a network. This fellow, Wes Clark, made a major contribution. He said, all this communications infrastructure